Today I'm going to teach about the chords and shapes of double C tuning. We're going to stay in the key of C, and everything's going to be diatonic, which means it's going to fit in the key of C. It's not going to be out of the box or sound weird. It's all going to be in C major. So let's get in tune. We're in double C tuning, so from the first string we have a D note. Second string's a C note. Third string's a G note. Fourth string's a C note. Fifth string's a G note. The first thing you should know is that there's three ways of playing every chord. There's root position, first inversion, and second inversion, which is why I'm breaking this into three lessons. So basically, the C chord will have three ways of playing it. The D minor chord will have three ways of playing it. The E minor chord will have three ways of playing it. This F major chord, so on and so forth. They all have three ways of playing it. And then there's a cross between, where you can have a C chord here and a C chord there, and combine them to make a different voicing that is a C chord and sounds interesting. Also, there's a ton of tensions I can show you guys, so there's a lot of ground to cover. Here are the chords in C major. We have a C major chord, a D minor chord, an E minor chord, F major chord, G major chord, A minor chord, B diminished, then C major, we're back to C. A lot of times you'll hear this B diminished substituted for a B flat major which is not diatonic, but it is a substitute and it works. But I like this B diminished, it's such a pretty chord. And obviously the C, you have that. So what you need to remember is that in the key of C major, the one chord is major, two chord is minor, three chord is minor, four chord is major, five chord is major, six chord is minor, seven chord is diminished, and then we're back at one. Let's learn our root position chords. We're gonna start off with your one major chord, your C major chord, because we're in the key of C major. So put your finger on the first string, second fret. That's your C major chord. If you wanted to make it minor, move it back one string and you have a C minor. But today we don't want to because we're in the key of C major. So let's keep it diatonic. Let's learn the two minor chord, the D minor chord. We're gonna start by barring the second fret with our first finger, then putting a finger on the first string, third fret. That's your D minor chord. If you wanted to make it major, all you have to do is move this first string, third fret to the first string, fourth fret. But that's not in the key of C major, it's not diatonic, so we're gonna stick to this two minor chord. But what I wanna get across is that there's a difference between major and minor. The major has this spread out look to it, whereas the minor is very close. So you can recognize the two shapes. Remember when we made our one major chord, how it was here? Well, you could think about the nut as being a finger, kind of doing it for you, and then you have this here. It's kind of spread out, it's major. When it was minor, it was closer. So remember those two shapes, the spread out, major, kind of close together, minor. Before we go any farther, I have something to admit. I don't like bar chords. I really don't like barring this D minor chord. And luckily we don't have to. There's another way of playing it, leaving an open ringing note. Let's just put a finger on the fourth string, second fret, third string, second fret, and then pinky on the first string, third fret, and leave this second string to ring open. It gives it a better, better ringing open sound than closed down sound. It has this nice open sound. I'm going to do that to all of our chords. You can always play it barred if you want, but I like to leave that second string open to ring. The neat thing about leaving the second string open, the C note, to ring over these chords is it'll have a different effect on every chord. Uh, it'll work because it's a C note and we're in the key of C, but it'll have a different tension note relative to the chord we're playing. So if I was to bar all my chords, this is what it would sound like. Left 
to ring, it sounds a lot more open and has a lot of neat tensions and sounds naturally. So you have. A lot prettier. You now know your one major chord, your two minor chord. Now we're gonna learn our three minor chord. It's our E minor chord. So take this two minor chord that you already know and just slide it two frets up. There you go. Or you could bar it if you want. Or leave it open. So you'll take your first finger and put it on the fourth string, fourth fret. Put your finger on the third string, fourth fret and then your pinky on the first string, fifth fret. There you have it. Now for your four major chord, your F major chord. So you have this three minor chord. All I want you to do is scoot it all forward one fret and then extend this pinky because we want it major, not minor. So that's gonna be fourth string, fifth fret, third string, fifth fret, and pinky on the first string, seventh fret. And of course you can bar it if you want or leave it open. Your five chord is major as well. Just take this shape and move it two frets up. And it's gonna be fourth string, seventh fret, third string, seventh fret, and first string, ninth fret. Or just bar your seventh fret and put a pinky on the first string, ninth fret. Your sixth chord is gonna be minor. It's gonna be an A minor chord. You can start off by barring your ninth fret and putting a pinky on the first string 10th fret. Or if you want to leave it open, put your first finger on the fourth string 9th fret, put your middle finger on the third string 9th fret, and then your pinky on the first string 10th fret. Now we have our seven diminished chord, our B diminished chord. This is a little different, it's a diminished shape. We haven't learned that yet. What I want you to do is take your first finger and put it on your third string, 10th fret, put your middle finger on the fourth string, 11th fret, and put your pinky on the first string, 12th fret. There you go. B diminished. Sometimes people substitute this chord for a B flat major. So if you wanna do that, you can bar your 10th fret and put your pinky on the first string 12th fret. Or leave it open if you want as well. Now we're back to our C major chord. We're one octave higher from where we started. So we're at our 12th fret. You can bar your 12th fret with your first finger and put a finger on the first string 14th fret. Or again, you can leave it open like we always do. You now know your root position chord shapes, the first of three shapes we're going to learn. Let's practice them. We'll start off with a one chord, your C major chord. We'll hit the bass followed by a strum top, and we'll do that four times in a row. Then we'll move on to the next shape and keep going up until we get back to one. So let's start. One and a two and a one major. Here's another way of practicing these shapes with some drop thumb. You'll start by hitting the first string while your thumb lands on the third string. Then hit your bass note, your fourth string, followed by your thumb on the top. This way you get the three notes that are making up the chord. One, three, four, top. 
do this at your leisure and then just change to your next shape. And just keep going up. So. Something to remember is don't just practice going up, practice going down. A lot of people practice going up, but forget that sometimes you're going to want to start up here and work your way down. You can also take these chord shapes and um, simplify them. Instead of playing the full chord shape, you can kind of outline or outline it. So you could start off with your first string, second fret, then move to your first string, third fret, second string, second fret. Remember your two chord had the bass here. We're just going to move it down to your second string. They're both C notes. Then you can slide it up two frets, then slide it up to your F chord, your four major, then your five major, six minor, seven diminished, your one. So it's position chords, make sure to mess with them. Don't just go up in a scale. Mess around and uh, see what they sound like. You know all of the chords in the key of C major. You can write songs. Um, for instance, you could start with your sixth chord. Back to your one chord. To your two chord. to your one chord, to your three chord, to your four chord, six, five, four, three, one. Just kind of feel around, see what you like, see what you don't like.